Hey guys, you're in Germany. M0FXB, welcome back to my videos on the DM1701 and the new model, the DM1701A, just lying there on the table. I absolutely love these radios. They're VHF, UHF, DMR, backlick, keyboard, full color screen, proper VFO, changing knob, volume knob, lots of customizable buttons. So anyway, with the 1701, nice big belt clip there. And uh, as you can see, and look at the screen. They've added this sort of Bofung and this sort of fluorescent type or reflective screen. The antenna isn't the best quality antenna, but it doesn't matter because we can go and buy a Nagoya one. Solid looking set. And if you look on the top there, you can see that it's got like these little ears sticking out. So when you put them side by side, the the older model is curved on the corners i highly recommend you get yourself a hotspot this is a duplex hotspot although we're using it in simplex mode anyone that has not got a hotspot and and they own a dmr radio are crazy same goes for d star and c4fm but especially dmr uh, it just opens up the whole world to you suddenly you've got your own repeater in your shack at home and it's so portable so yeah, look at the reflective bit there, DMR transceiver, solid looking 220 uh, milliamp hour battery, as you can see, full keypad there. So it does look a bit like the Alence HD1, HD2 models, same size, slight, maybe slightly narrower, but look at the keypad, it's very similar, LED on top, you've got a dedicated volume control channel change knob so and the price is so different because about 120 130 pound um when you buy the hd one anyway back to the uh 1701 so i mean the 1701 is only about 40 pounds maybe 43 delivered the 1701a with the open gd 77 firmware that you can see here is uh about 60 pound at the most no i'd say a bit less more like 55 delivered and it but it does come pre-loaded and you know loading firmware is annoying you have to download the proper uh, cps software and the drivers so having it pre-loaded you turn it on look go straight into the menu look at all these functions and you've got some nice buttons there the usual kenwood microphone connector on the side there the programming cable does go there but you do need a special cable it's about 10 pounds i would say so uh, look out for that and try and order it at the same time. Luckily, I've got one. So we're in VFO mode at the moment. And if you look here, that's the menu, main menu button, the green button. Just tap it. And one of the main ones you'll use is actually channel details. And that's where you add a lot of the parameters for the channel you're using in VFO mode. And then you can save it to memory. But look at all these options we've got here. If we go in... And we'll have a go at changing the color because this is a full color radio and you can customize everything you see. The signal meter, there's two signal meters, uh, any menu selection, everything on the screen, whether it's the talk groups coming through, talk alias, you can customize the colors. So we'll go back in, go options, and this time we'll go to theme options. Let's have a look a minute, just quickly show you display options. And you've got quite a few selections there. Screen normal. Oh, yeah, you can invert the screen. And you've got the mode, the brightness, the time. You can turn off the volume, battery information, timeout, timer for when you talk, UTC. Uh, just so much and so easy as well. And there are shortcuts. So anyway, look at that. We'll just go to screen inverted. And that alone, even if you never used the colors, the black and white. Oh, we need to make sure we select and keep that. The black and white um, looks great in itself. Look at that, how cool that is. So anyway, back into options. Let's change the, the theme. Go down to theme options. And uh, you've got the day and night theme. We'll do day. And you select it and you go in. You can, this is where each item, the color can be changed. And there are, you know, hundreds of colors. 
Uh, so the background's black. Let's select it and see if we can. It's a bit of fiddling here because you can with the software. It's a lot easier. You just tick boxes. With this, you have to um, sort of choose and mix the color. So we go green there, blue, back to green, uh, and then you just turn the middle knob. See that will make making it green. How cool is that? Now go back, back, back. Oh, we forgot to select it. You do have to save it. I believe you actually hit the hash and then the green. And there it is, green and white. Now, we don't have to use green and white. We can use any color we like. Even the signal meter at the top, which is white at the moment, we can change that. And there's actually a two. There's a nine plus signal meter as well. And normally I set that one to red. And so let's just, just turn it. Turn it down, not that you can hear anything. Because we've muted all the audio from the radio. There you go, there's some audio. Nice green LED which changes red when you transmit. Right, Hubnet. Let's um let's log into my Hubnet. This is the G7 RPG control panel. Log that in. If you, that's for your analog side of the radio, because remember this radio works great when you're using analog. So back on here, four three four five fifty. Can't hear anyone at the moment. Uh, but if we go into the settings, channel details, select. And then we can uh, go down and we can find our, let's have a look, maybe we'll find our DMR number. Keep trying. Menu. Channel details. Uh, that's our CTCSS. Just key up. And no, not making it at the moment. Well, we can tinker with that later. Let's have a go at the uh, the DMR. That's the frequency of my hotspot. You can see it chugging away in the background. I might swap it and try my uh, my silver hotspot. There you go. Actually, I could probably in go into settings and tell it to display the screen when the power cable is on top rather than underneath because it makes it a bit awkward to, to stand it up. But you can see there that all the information is coming through on the screen for the talk group contacts with the... The call sign. So in PyStar settings, we can just go to the configuration, scroll down, go into OLED settings, and we can tell it to, to turn it upside down or tell the screen to rotate. Um, and there, look, you can see all the information coming through there. If you zoom in and then look on the screen, it's the same information because it's, it's live. Back into the PyStar dashboard. Config, PyStar Raspberry is the password. Then that's your sort of config page. You've even got M17 listed, but there's the frequency, there's the DMR number, there's my call sign. And then use your brand Meister and your password. Hit the dashboard, you can hit the call sign, and it goes to radio.net, but you can uh, sorry, configure it to, to actually show the QRZ rather than radio.net. But radio.net is a good link for if you want to register for your DMR number. Yeah. I mean, look how nice that looks. You know, this is why I say people are mad if they don't get a hotspot. And in the background, we've got the Anytone 878. Looking good, showing all the information. And uh, and sounding good. J E Victor Echo Two Julian 
Chicago, which involves a for a front with his key, Quebec. It's A2 so we'll just um, have a quick look at the software because you've got the satellite option there. You do need to get your location in, but just Google location latitude in Chrome. Google it and it'll give you your location. Then go to radio info and, and then set it there. Just start to type it. So 5-1. Three six eight W. I am here in the city. Zero zero two. I go to Key West right now in South Florida. In here. Nine three seven seven, and you can change the E. I have to remind myself. I remember you. You possibly hit the star, then the side button. I'll have to check it, but you can change the E. Depending on what model you've got, because you've got the Bofung, you've got the MD380, 390, RT3S method, TYT9600. There's definitely a way to do it. But look, there's my location. And there's a, um, a grid square number. Hit satellite now. And, oh, we need our caps. So what you do, you now use, use the software to upload what they call caps basically the satellite location data that is then compared with your manual GPS location that you've typed into the radio but plug in my programming cable here and then once it once you it knows where your location is and it's got the location and the times of the satellites then it's like a computer it calculates it all for you that's what the software is called open GD 77 just quickly read we, we will do tutorials on the software, but you, you don't even look for a com. You just plug it in and read, and it just does it. But you do have to load the USB driver. But luckily, okay. when you lo when you download the CPS software, it does add the drivers for you. So we'll just go to this section here, and then we'll go install satellite caps. That's now loading all the information from the satellites. I don't know where it gets it from, but... It, Thank you, OpenGD77. You can back up, you can restore, you can add voice prompts. Lots. You can actually choose voices for the voice prompts as well. So, yeah, back to the radio. Look how nice that looks. I mean, I think it was 51 delivered. And look how nice the reflective screen is, the buttons complete keypad there just how can you not like it and look at the hot spot just sat there doing its thing and we've got the duplex one on the left cradle charger i don't know i've got all these radios lying around but you know you can never have too many radios and that isn't actually a joke because when you've got lots of radios you actually enjoy yourself more look at that satellite view we've got there we select down uh, more more information from the satellites and if we click down again we can actually see the receive and transmit and the Doppler shift there and even the signal is all live there at the top look and when we go into the sat when the satellite is passing over our head we will actually be able to with the good antenna we'll definitely hear all the other stations calling up to it you hear that whatever um because they're all strong signals but the satellite you do have to wait until it's coming towards you and moving away from you um if you want to try and just you're not really talking to the satellite you're bouncing off the satellite and then to, to another station but it's so cool that you can do that and that everyone can hear each other so um yeah look at all these functions it just goes on and on just scrolling through and you can set you know dmr or fm in channel channel details you can set the receive and the transmit frequency that's gb3bc 145 750 back to channel details which is one that you're going to use a lot remember there's zones there's a GPS, but there is no GPS in this radio, but you don't need it. I think they probably will make a model that has it, but you don't really need it. It doesn't, it doesn't help you with the satellites. And there's history there as well. So this radio has been preloaded with the contacts, and it does keep history straight away. How clever is that? It remembers everything it's receiving. And, uh, you know, they've made real good use of the memory. Remember, it holds the whole database and more. Some people say it will hold half a million contacts. There's my location there. Slightly wrong because we didn't get the West right, but that's okay. We can correct that later. DMR contacts. Look, and yeah, we need to add more contacts. Contacts are basically 
your talk groups, um, group contacts. Then you've got private, which is more individual people and some commands there. And when you key the mic, it actually shows you how long you've been speaking for as well, right on the screen. You see my DMR going off in the background. So if you're new to this and you feel like getting a radio that has VHF, UHF, and it does do it very well, analog, and then you want to have a little learn about DMR, this is the perfect radio to go for. It's 50-odd pounds. And believe it or not, the if you had another DMR radio, you can actually use this as a hotspot as well. It will convert into a hotspot, but you do need another DMR radio to use it as a hotspot. But it works really well. And the, the cool thing is it does it with blue DV. Uh, so all via the cable that you'll plug into your PC and PiStar. And you go into the settings and you tell it, OK, be a PiStar hotspot, be a blue DV hotspot. And they're both different interfaces. The blue DV by PA7 LIM. There's our standard PiStar hotspot, which is very the prices have come right down now, and so get yourself that hotspot. But I will do a video demonstrating the hotspot side of this radio. I've done several before, but hey, it's a new radio. I've got the 1701A model. Let's just do it, and uh, you will like it when I do it. I'll do it tomorrow morning sometime. It's getting quite late now. So, um, yeah, hopefully this you'll find this video helpful. It'll save you. You get a good deal if you hit the link in the description. And the delivery is literally like six days now. AliExpress, they've got warehouses everywhere now. And don't listen to everyone when they say Chinese rubbish. It's such ridiculous. How can this be made for £50 delivered? Mind? Don't forget, they've got to ship it across the world. They've got to pay VAT. Yeah, or we pay the VAT. And we get this radio with this functionality and this quality for £50. I mean, I don't even know how they make them. So, um, you know, thanks for watching my channel. Uh, hit the like, hit the subscribe, get my wife a coffee. She loves coffee. And why don't you join the YouTube channel? You know, join up, join it, become part of the community. It's going to grow over years. We've had... 16 million views, 16,000 videos here, just helping people and helping ourselves and just playing radio. Thanks for watching my channel. Bye for now. 7-3, all the best.